Welcome, everybody. After my discussion, this is uh, episode 190, part two with Guru Mike Belzer. And uh, we are so happy to have him back on. As I indicated in the first one, I thought there would have been an issue covering everything in just one episode. And we were at that hour and a half mark, and uh, which I always like to give the uh, guests the option instead of dragging it on if they'd be more interested in doing a part two. In this case, Guru Mike was definitely interested in doing a part two. And um, thus, but last, here we are. So I want to thank you again for uh, coming on. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but positive, positive remarks from the first one. Everybody thought it was great. Um, your presentation, your stories, everybody, um, you know, just thought it was um, just fantastic. And uh, cool. yeah, I, I thought it was, uh, I really enjoyed it myself. And I am so looking forward to uh, part two tonight with you. That's great. You know, I really enjoy um, hearing stories and sharing stories because when you hear them, you, you kind of have a chance to live through that story. You kind of put yourself in that situation and, and it helps a lot. So, it's yeah. fun. so, you know, it's interesting. I saw uh, Mersion Labs, I, I think it was GM Romeo, and I saw they were talking about poisons from Malaysia and all that. And I'm just wondering if there was any coincidence to what we were talking about. <laughs> well, you know, uh, well, we can get back, we can get into that a little bit. Um, uh, I, I know that in the correspondence that I uh, uh, have from Don Drager to Dick Hayes, Drager said, I think that something was put into our food um, mm. that was this. Um, and, and, you know, the, the term poison sounds like they're trying to kill you. Yeah. You know? um, where, where on that continuum, I don't know. Yeah, um, maybe it'll just make them sick or just com uncomfortable, obviously. But, right, but the go-to, the kill, I guess, is really unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's a little dramatic. Uh, yeah, but, without knowing for sure. Yeah. yeah. But everybody got sick, and, and it just that was the start of the. Yeah, I know you, you remember saying that. And folks, yeah. if you were watching, uh, please tell us where you're watching from and let us know if you got questions on that. Uh, for those who are watching, part one, we pretty much covered um, his beginning journey. We started kind of a little backwards into uh, the Anno, his time at the Anosano School with uh, Jim Bastillo. Guru Dan, the classmates. Then we went on to his meeting of uh, Don Drager, his kind of uh, tours with him and all that. And where we left off was um, getting just right into his journey in the Philippines. Uh, one, he was there just for a week or so, but he come back. And that's, but before we get into that, uh, we want to just cover a little more on hopology. Uh, Guru Mike received a question, so he wants to give a little more context. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to assume the question came from Elric. So yeah. So take yes. off where you'd so like the to. Question, the question was, um, how developed was, was Don Drager's hoplology about the time that I went to visit him and, and travel with him, which was in 1979. And, um, by that time, you know, Drager had been developing hoplology for 15, maybe even 20 years. And he That's was amazing. A, a, an expert on world martial culture. Um, and, and he was commissioned by um, uh, universities and museums to, to review some of the, the, the weapons holdings that they have uh, and, and do an analysis. For example, the University of Hawaii, um, the East-West Center and the Bishop Museum. Uh, this is this is an unpublished document that I found at the Bishop Museum. And this is his analysis of classical Hawaiian martial culture. And in the context, or contents, it talks about part one, hopological theory and background, the typological construct, making the analysis, um, and, then, and then it goes on. And um, he talks about a critique of, of a particular book called War and Weapons. Uh, where he has some some issues with what is said in that book, uh, but you know it was a it was a full you know, a full analysis of what the Bishop Museum has. Uh, it just was never published, but it is there. Well, what a shame! Oh, cheers. Um, he, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, when he was out training and and researching, he would. That's produce, how good show, but you beat me to it. Okay. <laughs> you see that? 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah. This, this is called a macro analysis of a weapon and a system. And it's, it's broken down using a category, group, genus, type, subtype, class, order. So the macro analysis of the weapon, this particular weapon is the Badek. Can you see that okay? The Badek. Yes, I've got, okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. All right. So the category, bladed, the group, metal, bone, genus, knife, the type, Badek, subtype, Keda Male province, class, this is the de describing it, asymmetrical, composite, regular, Abrupt, curved, flared, butt section, hilt, mm. rectilinear, straight blade, bilateral, tape, taper constricting point section, to accumulate point, single cutting edge, order, combat. All right, then they do a macro analysis of the system. Category, extra somatic, somatic, so weapon and empty hand. Mm -hmm. Group, bladed, open hand, foot. You can see in the picture that it's a knife defense uh, blocking the wrist and doing some sort of little grab at the elbow, like an elbow lock. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. Um, stab, pierce, puncture, stun, benumb, knock out, strangle, choke, lock, control, disjoint, parry, block, cover, order, combat, slash, ceremonial. So this is just a, a quick uh, uh, cliff notes of a, of a system and a weapon. So this mm. is macro analysis. Then he would go about making a micro analysis of different aspects of the weapon, different aspects of the system. He would be um, uh, going into a village or going into a, uh, an area where these arts were practiced. And, you know, he's, he's, he's this big white dude um, yeah. with a bunch of other dudes that happen to be white and they're just coming into this village and you know you have to kind of make your presence known peacefully yeah. and, and do it the right way and and i mean what are we doing hey could you show me your weapons and fighting techniques no hey How incidentally you can, can you <laughs> can i take a picture yeah you know so you have to bridge that gap somehow sure and one of the ways that he said they did it, because they brought their own Japanese training weapons with them. Mm. They would get in their gi and their hakama, which is that dark blue top and the dark blue, uh, big kind of flowing. Uh, okay. okay. Kind of thing. Uh, and they would start practicing Jo or Kenjutsu. Then the village would kind of come around, circle around, look. And then some of the the dudes that were ready to go they'd come out and they'd start showing their stuff interesting you know, oh we got something like that it looks like this you know it's like, like oh, okay. oh really can you show me more of that you know is picture okay so that's one of the ways that they yeah. got strange groups never saw them before to start sharing yeah right so just going in there and just you know there's guys right you gotta be kind of uh, you know, how, how are we going to do that yeah, um, no, 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 definitely, uh, you got to be imaginative and just creative so, as far as... So all of that was happening, these types of reports were being made um, at that time. Mm. What was happening with Hayes and Drager uh, uh, at that time, they were exchanging lots of letters between 1978 and, and 80, is Hayes was uh, presenting some very interesting ideas that motivated Drager to say, okay, you know what? I've always wanted to create a textbook of hoplology because my goal is to make hoplology its own academic discipline. Right. That's what he wanted. Anthropology, archaeology, hoplology. Okay, okay. He, didn't want, he didn't want it part of anthropology. Okay. okay. Why? Because it, it contains so many things. It contains sociology. It contains anthropology. It contains archaeology. It contains metallurgy. You know, it contains um, chemicals, you know, mm. so it's it's all encompassing. That, so that was that was where he was going. Um, they had created a, uh, a plan for a 10 acre center on the Big Island of Hawaii. The, the, um, the acreage was already purchased. Um, mm. The, the uh, uh, bylaws were already created. They had a, a profit and nonprofit set up. And, and his plan was probably at age 60, he was going to make the transfer from Japan to Hawaii. 
create a training center, bring instructors from various uh, locations to teach authentic arts, and then continue to do his research, train younger people to go on and do what, what he was doing. Wow. And you're, so that's the idea there. It was, it was quite well developed. In your opinion, do you think he achieved his goal? Well, he, he got close. And mm -hmm. uh, do I really think it's going to become its own academic discipline? Probably not. Really? Uh, and why, why so? Just, just because it's very, it's very difficult to create a new niche. And, and, there are, and he talks a lot about this in the letters to Hayes. Um, you know, the anthropologists feel like, hey, that's, that's part of what we do. The archaeologists, that's part of what we do. Look at all the weapons we have, you know. Um, the, the unique part that Drager brought to it was it's a study of systems. It says, what's the, really, what's the big deal about the weapon? Mm. You know, oh, cool, you know. Um, but, but it's how it's used, right? So it's a study of the warrior, the weapon, and the fighting system that creates hoplology. And one of the aspects of being a hoplologist is you need to be with what he called emic, or you need to have training in a weapons-based system. Okay. Now, for example, let's say I'm a journalist and I'm watching a game of golf, but I've never played golf. Right. No, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I can describe what I'm seeing, sure, but sure. I'm coming from the outside looking in, and that's called the etic view. I'm going to miss a bunch of stuff because I, do, I don't know what to look for. But if I'm emic, I can write about not only my art, but I know what to look for in these other systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can write about it. But I have to write it in a way that the etic person, the outside person. On the outside looking in. Gotcha, right. Gotcha. So, for example, we were talking about the eight combative traits. Um, and I don't know, is, is it possible for you to bring up the... the the email that I sent you showing the combative traits, this one. Yeah, let me just see what I got because I downloaded them. Um, let me just see. Um, okay, that's the, on the 8th there. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just talk about it while. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. If you, can't, if you can't, that's okay. No, no. So where did these traits come from? The traits came from not only Don Draker's practice of the quote you, the old samurai arts, but, but other uh, people that he was training with in that period of time. And the deal with the samurai arts is that they were multi hundreds of years old with the samurai class that was extremely um, well versed in close quarter combat with swords and staffs and bow and arrow and, and uh, also all manner of weapons. They were also at the top of the food chain. They were at the top of the caste system. So everything flowed down from the warrior caste down. So the entire culture is imbued with a, like a warrior ethos. Um, also, the Japanese were excellent at keeping records, right? They wrote everything down. They, they made the densho. They, they created their documents that they transmitted uh, from one generation to the next. It's okay, Dean, don't worry about it. So no, I found it. It's just, I don't know if it's going to show well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring them out right now. I'm okay, going to give okay. a five minute um, explanation of the eight traits. You can time me. All right. So the way it's broken down um, is we have to bring it out of the ethnocentric Japanese level of the names, right? Zanshin. Okay. Well, if you know what Zanshin is, we can talk about it. But if you don't know what Zanshin is, I have to give it an, another name. So that's what they were in the process of doing right in this period of time of 1978 to 80. So there are three brain-bound traits and five body-bound traits. The three brain-bound is one, volition. Now this is all under the context of you're in a life and death situation. You're in a fight for your life. You're fighting another warrior. Okay. Um, so you have to you have to decide what you're going to do. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go to the left, go to the right. Whatever it is, you have to make a decision. You have to go, right? That's volition. The Japanese term for that is sen. Okay, so the very first thing is, if, if, if I'm going to make a move on you, I have, to, I have to do it. That is sen, okay? Now, in the process of all this, there is a possibility that I can use the left side of my brain, mentation, or the right side of my brain, uh, 
intuition. So mentation, intuition. You're, you're deciding, you're, you're making a judgment, um, or you're just reacting. Okay, okay. both are happening. In Japanese, that was known as, and is known as kangai to kan. Kan is intuition. Okay, so you have, you have, you have volition or sen, you have mentation, you have intuition. All of this is allowed by what's called the flat mind or the steadfast mind, excuse me. That's the ability to deal with the fear reaction that you will have. If, if somebody is trying to kill you, you're going to have an adrenaline dump in your body and you, you have to have figured out a way to handle that. Mm. Breathing, uh, heavy training, personal experience, your genetic roll of the die, whatever. Um, each person handles it differently. Uh, maybe some people can be calm, cool, and collective. You know, SEAL yeah. Team 6, going in to get Bin Laden. You know, they, they're thinking, we might not come back alive. Sure, sure. But at the end of it, they said, you know what? Basically, it wasn't any harder than any other operation we, we did. Yeah. It really was just another day at the office. Mm -hmm. you know, so those guys might be calm, cool, and collected. Uh, people that don't have that level of training, you know, uh, they're going to have to at least try to maintain some kind of juiced level, but without going into mindless fear and panic. Mm. So, so it, it has to be in, a, in, in what is called steadfast. Fudoshin is one term that they use. Uh, Heijoshin is another, which is kind of spreading out the, the, uh, the energy over a period of time. All right, so those are the three brain bound. The body bound traits that were identified over hundreds of years is the use of the, the vocality, use of the voice. How, what do we know that with? The kiai in Japanese. Yeah, right, okay. okay. Right? Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's making a command decision or command presence known, but, but it's using the, the, the vocality. Moving down the body, there's the abdomen, the innate abdominal trait or the innate or the manifest abdominal trait. What's that? That connects the lower part to the upper part. If you don't have a good connection there, you know, your core, then right. the rest of your combative capability is going to be affected. Okay. Moving down, there's something called, it's very interesting, it's called the omnipoise trait. What's that? The Japanese term is mu kamai. Kamai means stance. Okay. Mu means nothing. So it's the stance of nothingness. What's that? Okay. Uh, here we go. This is the stance of nothingness. All right. It's a natural stance. There's nothing here. I'm not like this. I'm not right like here. this. I'm not like this. No. Mm. I'm here because from here I can move anywhere. Mm. I can do. I can go anywhere. If I want to hit you, I just lift my hand up. Okay. I don't have to get ready and hit. Right. If I want to respond, I can just respond. I am. I'm already ready. And if you look back at other systems, all, all the karate systems, they all stand like this. And then they come in and they do their thing, right? In judo, before they do their kata, everybody stands like this. They don't start off like this. Right, right, right. This right. is sport, you know. This, the, many systems have realized. And look, in Eskrima, how do we stand? Yeah, initially, right. right? That's Mukamai. Right, everything happens from Mukamai, omnipoise trait. And then the last two are the synchronous, Aiki being able to blend, and the Goju or hard and soft being able to apply pressure or respond to it. So those are the eight traits. Thank you. No, 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 no. That was that was that was awesome. That was awesome. Now, on Hopefully top that definitely Elric's question. Then <laughs> we were talking, we were talking about one of the the um, the core, the, the core group that was in Japan with Drager, one of them was Hunter Armstrong. Uh, Hunter Armstrong came to the Inosanto Academy. And at my invitation, he presented a talk on hoplology. And this is a, this is a transcription of the talk. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, it, it, I, I announced it to uh, Guru Dan. He, he announced it to the different schools. I didn't know how many people were going to show up. 
This was at the Marina School. Uh, 55 people showed up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if somebody's interested and they wanted to email me, I can send them a copy. Of yeah, this. that I definitely have downloaded. So I can also send it off to people for those who are interested. So folks that are watching, if you want a copy of that, I mean, um, either me or Guru Mike, just let one of us yeah. know and uh, we can certainly get that too. Um, so now I've got I've got a little segue into the Philippines. Are sure. You ready? Right. I'm ready. <laughs> so one of the things that was very interesting to me when I went to the Philippines is what's the difference between Kali, Eskrima, and Arnis? You know, at the academy, um, I, I'm, I'm hearing the different names, mm. seeing the different names, um, getting some impressions, uh, but I, I don't know. So not really. So I'm going to, every instructor I meet, I'm going to ask. Yeah. Okay, what, what is it? And of course, every instructor has got a different answer. Different answer. <laughs> you know, and, and is our niece just the stick fighting sport? Uh, well, um, not exactly. You know, uh, modern our niece by Ramy Presses. It's got it's got the swords in there. You know, it's got the empty hands in there. Uh, is crema is, is that only the term used in the, the central part and in Cebu? Um, is it a different name up north? Uh, is Kali the old ancestral form and everything else flows from that? Um, and different instructors had different opinions. Okay, so really what I got is it's three different names for basically the same thing. If you see somebody moving like that, that's that's got that old Filipino flow to it. You yeah. know, ah, are you do Filipino martial arts. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You know, it's got that flow to it. You can tell if, if somebody's a Shotokan guy, it's you, you can tell. Yeah, right. It's right. You see high right. kicks, Taekwondo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Ah, you know, Savat, you know, yeah. <laughs> you can tell it's got mm -hmm. a look. OK, so go to the Philippines, do my thing, come back 10 years later. I'm in a bookstore. What uh, you know, what <laughs> what section do we all go for? Yeah, the martial arts. I'll be in the martial arts section. Yeah. Okay, I find <clears throat> this book. Oh my yes, that is a great and I have that. Yeah, I go, such a great oh, reference. By yeah. Tony Diego and Christopher Ricketts. That's awesome. Somebody finally wrote the book. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So I sit down in the little aisle there. <laughs> And I start to look at it and I go, oh, let's look at the introductions. Ooh, nice, cool. Mm. Right, talking about the names and stuff. And he said, you know what? In 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 the Philippines, the term Kali is really not, it's not that it's unknown, it's just it's not really used. Not really. That's what everybody tells me. Or that's right here currently. Uh, we used our days, okay. Um, let me see if I can find this. All right. So he talks about Kali. And not necessarily being a, a mother art. Um, okay, this is on. This is uh, the second page of the introduction. Okay, it's. I'm going to show it to you. It's right here. Okay. Okay. Here I go. Okay. Kali, Kalis Illustrissimo became the name of the fighting art of the late Grandmaster Antonio Illustrissimo, courtesy of an American anthropologist and hoplologist named Michael Belzer, who visited him in 1985 to 86. Right on. And that was one of the questions. How did they, how did you coin the name? Like, where, like, in other words, duly credited? I mean, obviously, this remember, is remember we, we were talking yesterday about when I was training there, uh, the art, his art was not systematized. Correct. It wasn't Correct. like, you know, here's a list, here are the 12 angles, here's this, you know, four counters region, you know, here are the drills. No, it was just, we watch what he does, and then we ask questions, and then you work with Tony, and then work with the Roberto, and really it's up to, to us to try to make a system out of it. Yeah. Okay, so as we're on our month-long trip, we're talking about coming to the States and, and doing seminars, and I said, you know, what is the name? And he said, I, it's just my art, you know? I mean, it's an Olisi. 
the, the stick is, it's an olisi. So we could call it olisi, olisimo, you know, it's, it's green. Olisimo. Okay. I said, what is your favorite weapon? He said, the baron. I said, okay. So I, it's bigger than a knife. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a short sword. I would say that, that, What's the what's the term for sword? Kalis. Mm -hmm. I I would say instead of olisi Escrima, I, I would say it would be Kalis Illustrissimo, the sword of Illustrissimo. Okay, and that's it. Moving on. Wow, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> now it gets better. It gets better. <laughs> okay, so so a few years ago, my training partner Thomas Rodriguez gives me a gift. And the gift is a DVD that he found online called Kali Illustrissimo. Yeah, so yeah. it's not Kali's anymore. It's Kali. Yeah. And later in the book, he also talks about, you know what? Even though ka Kali is not really a term in the Philippines, that's what we use because that's what everybody knows. And where did yeah. everybody yeah. knows come from? Guru Dan and the Santo. The U.S. is a marketing. Sure. Because that's what he's teaching. He's When he's talking to us, he's talking about Kali. And he's talking about mm -hmm. this. It, that's where it, And he's international. Yes. Yeah. So, no, talk no, about yeah. 360. We had a huge, we had a show on, and one of the shows was basically, I think it was the four, five, and one of the topics that came up was a word. And definitely a Western term created here in the West. But you better damn, as you just mentioned, it's definitely going to be embraced. I mean, when you got Dan and Asano, yeah. I mean, Leo Gahe changed from our niece to Kali. So, I mean, yeah. And, and, so, and <laughs> so what, I understood, what I understood from Tony was, he talks about in the book, is that one of Illustrissimo's uh, students was Via Brill. Because Via Brill and Cab Angel Cabalas, they were all on the docks. Kind of like a brat, the brat pack, kind of a docks, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, a very early dog brothers, probably. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> coming to the U.S., I don't know, maybe, maybe I got to make myself a little bit different. And maybe I can call it a different name. Sure. And maybe this can be the... Kali is the, and Draker talks about Kali, the ancestral forms of Kali. He talks about that. Uh, maybe I can make that the mother art and other arts mm. flow from that. There you go. Now, if, if you're teaching a brand new beginner, they know nothing about whatever art. The teacher, anything the teacher says is accepted as gospel. It is, right? You're new. Uh, if, right. if we yeah. tell you to stand like this, that's the correct stance. They're probably going to do it. Yeah, they have no compare and contrast. They have other no systems, right? They're going to do so, it. Sure. So uh, you know the the in Shindo Musoryu, part of the history is the founder of our style was the only person to hand Miyamoto Musashi his only defeat. Mm. And there's a whole story about that and a whole legend about that. Um, did that actually happen? Well, there's controversy. Musashi's side says no. Our side says yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, the story appears in both densho. You know, mm -hmm. and in Musashi's side, it's more like, well, the first one was a public duel and I won. The other one was a private duel. It was, yeah, it was a tie. You know, mm -hmm. he's still a good guy. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't kill him. You know, so there, there's that type of thing that, that goes on. Yeah, definitely. We got a bunch of people here, Guru, saying hello. Um, Let's, uh, I, I just, okay. Uh, we got Casey from Vancouver, Eric O'Brien, Rich from uh, Illinois, Kuru Louie from Canada, Mario from the Philippines, TJ Nielsen from Australia, Jason Ward from Ontario, Canada, Paul from Midwest, Elric from the Philippines. Elric. We got DRC who is going to be on tomorrow. We got Yui Casey, wow, and we got Shamin. Am I pronouncing that correctly, sir? If I'm not, I apologize. Um, wow, interesting. Yeah, this is an interesting debate. So, before we just get on, we start to get in there. Casey did have a question. His question is, "Who took the photos?" 
of you, GM, GM Tony, yeah. and <laughs> Roberto Morales. That's why I, you know, I didn't want to. That's who I was going to guess. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Roberto Morales. Okay. And um, when I was with Drager, and he was taking me around to see all the different instructors, there of course are pictures of me getting smacked around by all the different instructors. Who took those pictures? Don Drager. No. Uh, okay. I figured the, the 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 ones that you shared were I I figured uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow yeah, yeah. and I, one other thing about about Drager his inspiration was from Sir Richard Burton from this book it's called the Book of the Sword the of the, uh, interesting yeah okay yeah uh, interesting he was, okay. he was around in the eighteen hundreds mid eighteen hundreds. Um, it says the history of the soul is the history of humanity with with these words british author victorian scholar world traveler sound like somebody we know uh, mm -hmm. richard burton begins his eloquent and exceptionally erudite history of the queen of weapons spanning the centuries and wide range of cultures this is hoplology burton's rich and elegant prose eliminates the sword as both an armament and potent symbol for nearly all peoples of the world, the sword embodied the spirit of chivalry, symbolized justice and martyrdom, and represented courage and freedom. In battle, it served universally as a deadly offensive weapon. Drawing on a wealth of literary, archaeological, and anthropo anthropological, linguistic, and other sources, the author traces the sword's origins from its birth as a charred, sharpened stick through its diverse stages of development to its full growth in the early Roman Empire. Recounting man's long association with this weapon, the author describes in brilliant detail, well, enhanced with nearly 300 e excellent line drawings and text, incredible wealth of data about the sword, its variations, saber, broadsword, cutlass, scimitar, rapier, foil, and a host of other arms, including dirks, daggers, throwing knives, flails, and much more. So this is what, this is what um, uh, inspired Don Drager. And, and Burton was the one that used the term hoplology first. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Way back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Jeez. That's a, uh, wow. Uh, guru. Uh, oh, okay. Wow. Look at those pics. Wow. And that was yeah. late 1800s, right? Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Um, uh, Kai, uh, Kai Cannon, uh, Guru Louis. Yeah, if you guys can, send me your email to Messenger, and I can definitely email you uh, those copies. Um, you guys, if you could just send me your emails to my Messenger. Um, so we, when we last left off last time, and um, was that you, you did the week there, um, you left, and then we were getting to when you kind of came back. Um, I spent a month in Singapore. I was supposed yeah. to do a completely different thing. That didn't work out. So I decided to come back to the Philippines and see if I can hook back up with the Illustrissimo group. Right. And, and so you obviously do. Yeah, and that's what I did. They, and um, insist. I was, I was looking at, at my journal. And, okay. Uh, with, within a very short period of time i mean i got there i went, went right back to the ymca um <clears throat> spent a day just kind of looking around and then i went yeah. back out the next morning to Rizal park and you know there, well, there's roberto you know <laughs> so, oh, there's Ilustrissimo. Hey, Tatang. oh you're back what are you doing back here you know i thought yeah. you were going to be gone you know and um by the end of that session um, yeah Roberto had come back to me and said, you know, I've spoken with Tatang about what you want to do. I know what you want to do. You want to travel right, around right, right. different islands. That's what you were going to do in the South Pacific um, and meet all these different instructors and look at their styles and mm -hmm. photograph them and all that. Um, he said, Tatang says you're going to need a bodyguard and a trainer. Mm -hmm. And he said, he will go with you. Um, all you have to do is provide rice for his family while he's gone um, and I will go with you too um, wow. you know I can be your advanced guy and um, same thing you know 
provide provide food for my family while I'm gone and we can go. So like, all right, it took us about yeah, a I week. know, huh? You're not gonna turn that down. Huh? We call you call ourselves the three musketeers and you know, again, I, I thought he was 72, but but he was closer to 82. And yeah, um, no, you were 85, am I correct? It was eight, circa I, I was 85, 1985. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So like we were good to go. And, um, you know, I had my backpack and they got their, their stuff together. And uh, the, the really great part was that Roberto really was the advanced guy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have to figure out what, what boat do I take from this location to that location? Okay. And, okay. and where am I gonna stay? You know, and how am I gonna do this? You know, I had him handle all of that. Um, and one of the first things he said before we started is, give me half your money. And I was like, uh, now I, I've only known him for a week, right? Two at the max, you know, and, and you know, uh, a lot of places, people are out trying to scam you. And I definitely sure, sure. got scammed a couple of times along the way. Um, but you know when somebody asks for half your money um my first question is uh why yeah he said well because you are considered a rich americano and so you're going to be a target wherever we go and um, we don't have any money mike so if we're down in zambwanga way down south and you get rolled and they take all your money it says we're shit out of luck I gotcha, gotcha. So give me half your money, I will protect it. You know, that at least we'll be able to get, get back. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's what we did. And I have to say that um, um, every night he would come to me and say, okay, Mike, here's what we started with. Here's what I paid for. Here's what we did. Here's our change. You okay. know, so he's a very honest um, young man. Yeah, honestly, an honorable guy. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I'm very upfront. Yeah. Um, and he, he handled it, you know, so, okay, here's, all right, Tatang, Mike, here, come on, you know, we're getting on the boat, we're going to go over here, we, we, we would land wherever we're landing at whatever port, and say, okay, just hang out, let me go find a place for, for us to stay, mm. and they're, they're called pension houses. Pension um, houses. Pension okay. house, yeah, it's like a hostel, you okay. know, but they were known as pension houses. So, uh we would go to to these and and some of them are kind of nice you know nice enough for, for a hostel some of them are very basic like the, the ymcas are kind of basic uh a, a very short aside on one of these in, in one of the islands i think it was in, uh, the island negros okay we're in the pension house it's nighttime i'm coming down the stairs this kind of large American with long hair is coming up the stairs. He's got two Filipinas, one on either arm, and they're coming up the stairs, you know? And so we come down, we pass each other on the stairs, and at the top of the stairs, he's like, he looks down. At the bottom of the stairs, I look up, he looks down, he goes, Mike? I look up, Tony? Flashback. In 1974, when I was living in Japan, I lived right around, around this, the corner from the Aikido Hombu in a okay. little apartment building. I'm in one room. Tony, the former Marine medic just out of, Marine, out of Vietnam, is next door. And so at age 25, he kind of took me under his wing and showed me the ropes, you know. But I hadn't seen him since 1975. Now it's 1985. Ten years later. <laughs> What are the chances? <laughs> wow. How was he doing? He was, there looking, he was there looking to buy a bar because okay. Okay. He, thought, he thought you could make money, you know. I wonder if he's still there. Catering the <laughs> tourist crowd. <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, that's, that was the regular routine, right? Rob, Roberto would take us um, from, from place to place, plant us, get us a place. And then what he would do is he'd say, okay, I'm going to go look around, talk to people, because otherwise I'd have to do it, right? Um, and I'm going to find us teachers. Then he'd come back and say, okay, we've got a guy here, we've got a guy there. At night, we're invited to come over there. 
So that was just the general routine that we did. Jeez, the teachers, like, I mean, like, you know, here's the thing. I'm just like, you know, I'm just by there. When you now during this time, of course, when you're visiting the different islands, right now we're 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 in Negros, speak on that. But you're at this at the time you're visiting, you're still training though with GM Illustrissimo. I mean, right. am I correct yeah. in that? Okay, yeah. okay. And, Did and you? Yeah, so, go ahead. so the again, the the important thing to know is that it it's not a regular class. Okay, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Understood. understood. One o'clock. Line up. No. Yeah. You, no, no, no. I know. Right. It's informal okay. as can be. Yeah, yeah. It's a problem. You know, you feel like a nap. Yeah, I'm gonna sleep a little bit. Okay. He gets up, and then Mike up. You know, okay, let's play, you know? Okay, I, Tatang, what about the knife? What about it, you know? Well, if I hit you like this, like this, oh, you do, you do like this, you know? So that kind of thing happened most of the time, you know, maybe a couple of times a day. Um, but it was just, you know, life on the road with, um, yeah, no, no, no. You know, and, and, and I don't know how much different it would be than if Guru Burton is traveling with Dan and Asanto, you know, demonstrating. Of course, they have to demonstrate together. Sure, sure. Uh, but along the way, they're probably doing some training. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, he would mention to me about Paul the Thors, right? And when they're before the seminars, they would do. Did you realize now, again, I know it's 1985, you're, you're young and all that. But did you realize at that time, at that formal age, the greatness that was before you? I mean, or, or were you just so caught up? And, and again, I, I couldn't blame you. You were. I mean, you're in a foreign country. You're, yeah. you know, just seeing. I mean, it must have been it, like it was both yeah. the the awesomeness of, of what I was experiencing. Um, uh, you know, you can reflect back on it better. Um, mm. when, you know, when you're there, you're in it. You know, hey, if yeah, I know if, it's if, hard. If Roberto says this, this guy I'm taking you to. Is, is known throughout the Philippines and he has a fish. That's what I mean, like to that register, like, wow, I'm like, like yeah. the best yeah. is probably uh, with I, me right now. <laughs> you know, I believe you. And and when I saw him meet different instructors, like when Kakoi Kanyete met him, there was definitely, of course, recognition and definitely. Yeah, they were just like, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. There was one interesting time uh, where where uh, Roberto and I were kind of off to the side. This was after a big demonstration of, at, at the Dose Pade Center. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great demonstration that they gave us. Uh, and and Kakoi Kanyete and uh, Tatang were talking together. And then they started to, you know, sh do some stuff. And, and they started to get a little animated. And I thought, I need to, I need to break the rhythm here. You know, because I don't, I don't know what's going on. You yeah, know, yeah. it looked to me like they were. Well, I don't know oh, if that. Were, you know, what, what if the, you know, what if it was this? You know, I don't know. So I just, I just got Tatang's attention. Tatang, Tatang, hey, can, hey, come here for a second. Excuse me. And it, so I, I separated them. Oh, because it was. It seemed like you didn't know where it was going. I got you. Oh, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. 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 Wow. Just, I mean, so like, this is just incredible. And I, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, like, you're at this young age. And I mean, like you're right. I mean, you're living in the moment. And then, of course, years down the road, you look back and you're like, "Wow, yeah. man, I was with a month with one of the most infamous screamadors on the planet Earth." <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same thing as as being able to train at, at the Inosanto Academy with Gro Dan and Asanto for you know. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that would be the sure. Years, sure. You know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, try to get, you know, try to pay him for a private lesson. He's like, I, I can't. I know you gave you gave your hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to class. Gosh. So now, <laughs> so from so, is there um? Because I know you're you're going on, and you know, I I got some questions here. Elric, um, you know, gave some fantastic questions. We're going to get to um, when you um, like, what was he like? You know. He, he, you know, because you've got obviously a month to spend with him. You know, we know he's revered as, you know, incredible talent um, and all that. But as a person, like, what was he like? I mean, just regular guy, just, you know? Yeah, now, now um, he didn't speak much English. He spoke a little, but not much. Uh, he, he seemed very friendly. 
he seemed very open, um, very helpful. He seemed like a, a kind man, you know, and um, fit fit right in with with a lot of other martial arts people that I've met all over the world. You know, mm. they're just into the same thing you are. Happy that you're sincere. Very appreciative that you want to learn what they have. You know, I mean, how many people are really seeking them out to learn what they have to teach? Especially in 1985. I mean, you were, yeah. I mean, you were way yeah. before the curve. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's that. Um, before Negros, I believe that we went to the island of Mindoro. Mindoro? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, if I'm not getting the, the islands mixed oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. I mean, this is, this you know, is incredible. It's all of the notes. Um, yeah. He, one one tribe that we visited was the uh, the Manyan Hino'o, Manyan Hino'o, that and so me. I want that's just the name of their tribe. I I told I told uh, uh, Roberto I would like to visit a a, a tribe sure. and, and see what they have, you know. So he said, okay, we we can go up to to a a tribe a tribal village that's in these mountains. So we made the hike, you know, we, we, we hiked up and, and I think I sent you some of those pictures. It shows um, the, the uh, tribesmen using the bolo um, yeah, and, yeah. and using the bow and arrow. So, uh, you know, it, it's it, classic that you've seen on all the TV shows. Here comes the outsiders, you know, and here comes the white guy and the little kids are all <laughs> dancing around. You know, they're so happy. They're coming up and touching you. Oh, you know, yeah. you're having a good time with them. Um, here comes the white guy. <laughs> yeah, here comes the white guy. We are introduced to one of the elders um, uh, and and through Tatang, really, because he knows different dialects. He was able to explain that this is a researcher from America. Okay. And he's interested in tribal ways um, and um, uh, your weapons and, and, and how you use them. Um, so, you know, would you be willing to share some of that? Wow, because um, Elric just asked, I'm sorry, Guru, Elric just asked, you know, what martial arts skills did you see? Any Duma grappling? Uh, it wasn't called Dumog, but um, yeah, definitely. We, we saw we saw grappling. But, wow. but it, it was, they didn't call it that. They just called it down on the ground. What did it resemble? Like the closest thing that you could relate it to, what, what did it resemble? Um, it was very jujitsu-like, you know, arm bars, locks, uh, chokes down on the ground, uh, arm bindings, you know, almost always stomach down. Fascinating. Yeah. So they start there or would there, would there be a take down? Um, take them down and then, then bind them up. From the from the top, a lot of times kneeling on the neck. Okay. 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 From Gee, then they call it take. And I'm sorry again. What would they call it? I'm sorry. Dumo. No, no, no. Be, they call it though taken to the ground. I'm sorry. Oh, just 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 on the ground. On the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, ha Manyan. Yep, I'm right. Mindoro Island, Manyan, Hanao. Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, so can of worms. one of the things that's happening there. Um, so you know, he, he's we're talking, and he's like, we don't really. Just, our tribe was was pushed out. We were we were co a coastline tribe. As yeah. civilization came, we were pushed farther and farther into the mountain. Okay, wow. so you know, we we have just retreated into the mountain. We we live a tribal lifestyle now. Um, I said, okay, well. If somebody was going to come in and like basically come into your area, what would you do? Would you fight? And he said, "No, we would just move <laughs> deeper." They just keep moving, huh? And I said, "Well, okay," because uh, I'm trying to get him to show me stuff. You know, yeah, show yeah. me techniques. Yeah. Um, what would you do if somebody um, attacked you or your family? Um, I said, "What if somebody was coming to attack your family?" He said, "I'd wait in a tree." And use my blowgun. No, oh, no. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna make a note. <laughs> did they show it to you? Did they show you an actual blowgun? Uh, that tribe didn't, but I, but I did see a blowgun. But you did see an actual one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How fascinating that! Yeah. I mean, that I can't believe you got to experience. Oh, 
Holy yeah. Man. And, and then, you know, he showed me the little bow and arrow because he said we have to get kind of close. And then that's how we do it. And I tell the story um, just, just because it's kind of funny. Um, in the afternoon, they, they basically said, do you want to stay for dinner? And I, um, we, we knew that it was getting dark. We probably shouldn't be going down in the dark. Mm. We're going to be sleeping here. Okay. Um, so, yes, we'd like to stay for dinner. So the, the elder gives me a chicken, a live chicken. Okay. There's your dinner. <laughs> you know, so I've got the chicken. And Roberto says, Mike, you're the one with the knife. Because, of course, in my backpack, I have my Rambo knife. Everybody's got to have your Rambo knife. Amen. 1985, so, Rambo comes out, you got one. So now I'm, okay, I, I guess I have to be the one that kills the chicken. Wow. I've never killed anything before in my life. Well, I, I guess I got to do it. So how am I going to do it? So um, I'm... I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm not sitting in a chair. I'm, I'm probably kneeling like this. I've got, I've got the chicken in between my legs. I've got him around the beak. I've got the knife, Rambo knife. I'm going to like this. Okay. I do that. Okay. Well, sorry. Um, the knife just kind of slid off the neck. It cut the neck, but it's very grizzly. Oh, now the thing is, is okay. cut. It escapes. It's running around. Oh so my God! See. All the tribes people are looking. Tatong's there. Morales is there. I'm with my Rambo knife, trying to find. Oh no! This had to be a scene. Now, to tell the truth, I don't remember who got the chicken. So hey, hey, the cliche, literally running around with like your chicken with your head Correct. So probably it was Tatong that got the chicken. He yeah, grabbed, yeah. It, breaks the neck. Right, he says, okay, we have to boil water. We boil the water, he says, this is what you do. You put it in the boiling water. He says, that makes the feathers easy to pluck. Take it out, he says, may I have your knife? <laughs> yeah, okay, let me, show you how, let me show you how it's done. <laughs> All right, yeah, so that was always- you know, I would have bought it. I awesome gotta be a, by Mikey Mike. I would, I would have bought that up too. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> man, that is so. So this, okay. So this is the island. Um, this is Mindoro, yeah. And and so my my notes on the inside of my my journal here. Okay. It says for Mindoro, there's the Manyan Hananu, uh, and then there's also the Manyan Gobatan. Uh, going back to the first, the first tribe, one of the things they wanted to know is, um, do we have any games? And, and I said, yeah, we've got games. What kind of games do you do? And they, they showed me the game of leg wrestling. Uh, and I may have sh sent you that picture too. Um, they basically are, are like this, knee to knee, and they're trying to force the knee down like our arm wrestling. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Like that. So we did that, um, and then I gave them arm wrestling. So I showed them how to. Oh, so that was your counterpart to their. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay, right. okay. And they loved it. It was all fun. Everybody had a great That's time. Interesting. Of all things yeah. they could ask you, they asked you what game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the other tribe that we saw on Mindoro, uh, the Manyan Gobatan. Uh, no name of a system, but they use the spear, bow, bow and arrow, and the bolo. And he said the, the bolo, it was with them all the time. So they had the bolo on them all the time. In addition, spear and bow and arrow. How yeah. fascinating. Now, when you mention this, like where and just as far as geographically speaking, is this fine? So we'd have to look at, at the, the map. Hang on a second here. Sure. Steve, they're still talking about the white guy in the chicken. <laughs> Steve, Gro Steve uh, Guru Mike, Steve Grody, Steve Grody said they're still talking about the white guy in the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Mindoro. Can you can you see that? I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's wow. Mindoro. 
So, yeah, and then I, one of the things that, that Drager would be interested in for his hoplological study, of course, he wants to examine the weapons, measure the weapons, photograph the weapons, um, then <clears throat> ask, okay, how, <clears throat> how are they used? Do you have a system? What's the name mm. of the system? Uh, you know, what, is there a teacher? Uh, is there a level of instruction? How, is this, how are the techniques transmitted? Um, is there any religious aspect to the weapon? Can anybody touch it? Are women allowed to touch it? You know, is it only authorized people can, can do certain things? Mm -hmm. um, is there any type of uh, uh, poison that's applied to the weapon? You know, so poison arrow, poison dart, okay. that kind of deal. So these are all notes that he's making. He has forms that he's filling out to, to, to kind of guide him. Um, and very important to find out about the teacher-student relationship. How, how are these things transmitted? From yeah, one right, right, right. Okay. 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 Because they have to be transmitted, otherwise you're going to lose them. Yeah, and, they get lost. Sure. Okay. And most of these, these tribal groups, the, the kids coming up are learning their weapons, of course, through hunting. Through, through hunting. hunting. They might be using a sling, you know. Mm. Uh, Guru Mike, yeah. Alaric would like to know, did they have shields at that time uh, in conjunction with the spears? I didn't see any shields, but that, okay. that doesn't okay. mean okay. they didn't have them. Yeah, it doesn't mean, right, okay. 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 We, of course, oh, wow. we them in museums. You know, we're in the cities, we went to museums. We, we looked at their weapons and we looked at their their armor, um, some of it leather armor. Uh, uh, we looked at the, at the different types of shields. And some of the museums were awesome. I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine. Yeah. I just, wow. I just, man, I just, it's amazing what you're, so, so Maduro, Negros. Yeah. Um, uh, also, you know, I, again, if I, if I, I didn't see the notes, you know, I wouldn't remember. But after Mindoro, yeah. we went to Panay Island. And, uh, and okay. According to uh, uh, Guru Romeo, who I'm, I'm just establishing a connection with now, who's in Manila, he said Panay is really a very um, uh, uh, great area of Eskrima. There's a lot of, of, of good people that are on Panay Island. Uh, we historically saw, speaking, we saw the Ati tribe, and they did bow and arrow, uh, and bolo, okay. and all all for hunting. Yeah. All for hunting, all for hunting. And then from so, so you're the best of your go ahead. no, you go ahead. To the best of your knowledge, do, are any of these tribes still in existence and using oh, yeah. them as hunting tools? Yeah, I mean. I haven't been there since 1985. No, so no, no, no. I, yeah, yeah, right. Fair enough. Yeah, right, right. They they were there and and you know they're they're just small groups and you know unless something drastic has happened and maybe it did yeah it, and it, it right. might not be there but so just, so starting on the big island Luzon Manila we went to Mindoro we saw a couple of mountain tribes um, Illustrissimo did great on the hike up and the hike back no problem at all went to Panay Island and then we went to Negros. That was in Negros. And on Negros, we saw a gentleman named Hortensio Navales. And he no, did a heat Now, I had never heard of it yeah, before. <laughs> Negros, BTK. <laughs> and he said it's used mainly in tournaments, uh, okay. but he had armor and he, he, he put the, I don't mean traditional uh, um, armor. Yeah, from, fencing mask and I got I mean, you. Yeah. And that's, that's when I put on armor for the first time and did a little sparring thing for the first time. And I have to say, I'm not that impressed. I'm not that impressed with that kind of armor. I'm not that impressed with that kind of sparring. Um, that type of thing to me is just advanced tag. You're, you've got a helmet. Um, you've got armor. It's just two guys doing this. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of, would hate. Would you like to score that? I no, would. I guess the, and again, you know what? And this, we've, we've had 
discussions on this in uh, different episodes, and it's kind of a hot topic. And the thing is, the, here, here's my conclusion. You know what I mean? I don't like it either. I'm not for it. I don't participate. However, if, if the people are doing it, if it makes them happy, they're happy in their journey, you know what I mean? But it's a, it's a really touchy, touchy area. But I'm with you. It's not my cup of tea, but I don't critique or criticize those who do it. Yeah, no, it's like, hey, I, I tried it. Um, to to yeah. me, <clears throat> to me, after you've done it a couple times, I, I, I think it's it's a lot like what Guru Dan used to say about sparring in general. He said, it's a doorway. Don't hang out in it. <laughs> Walk through it. <laughs> So like you said, though, like, how would you score that? I'm just thinking you're on the sidelines. Like. Yeah. You know, the, the gentleman that I think um, um, developed a very good sparring method that, that I like, it, it, his name's Hawk Hawkheim. And he so is a guy, yeah, yeah, he's been around for, for decades. He's a very, um, not only very skilled, but very experienced because he was uh, a military police officer in the Army. Um, he got out, he became a civilian police officer in Texas. Mm. Of course, while he was in the army, he was in the Philippines and uh, I'm pretty sure Vietnam too. Uh, and he was training in the Philippines with Remy Presas and Ernesto Presas, mainly okay. Ernesto. Okay. 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 Uh, and he, he has, he feels that each group of, of people know different things that the other groups can learn from. Sure. The military people know things that the rest of us can learn from. The martial artists know things that the rest can learn from. The police know things the rest can learn from. And what he calls the aware citizen knows things that the rest can learn from. His mm -hmm. mission is to connect all four. Gotcha. Okay. okay. And um, he's, he's a very uh, uh, interesting. Big influence. Yeah in my experience. No, we're having on the next month. Oh, and we got a question um, from Steve. And again, I thank you so much, Steve, for bringing Guru Mike to my attention. This is just incredible. Um, at some point, could you say what principles and tactics, combative training methods, you found most useful and that you hold on to present day? Sure. Um... Let me let me finish this sparring thing. No, perfect. Sure, go back sure. That, but, but keep that question. So, the sparring method that that I learned from Hawk Hakam, he calls it kill shot sparring. Okay. okay. Now you can take it as heavy or as light as you want, but usually we have helmets. Um, there's some hand protection. Anything else is optional. Um, uh, so, and and we can go with a regular rattan stick or. If you want to go with a padded stick, that's fine too. Okay, so we, we spar, bang, you get hit. Okay, you can't use that limb anymore. Mm. Right, okay, good. Well, boom, you get it on the leg. Now you now you drop down to one knee. Bam, you get it on the hit, not on the head, a good one, it's over. Okay. Kill shot. Okay, so he's you're you're getting credit for the good hits, you know. Yeah. If you get smacked hard on, on that wrist or that hand, that, it's going to probably take that arm out of commission. Yeah, okay, we well, can't do it anymore. You know, with the helmet on, we can do this all day. No, I know, I know. Don't I don't expect know. it all for it. I know, so, I know, I know. Gosh, if a fly comes into my eye, I'm like this. No, I know, I know. Think about that. Like a mosquito, I know. Think about right. that. You know? Yeah. So, the, so, anyway, I believe that method of sparring um uh it fits in better with my personal experiences i i agree with you we do it in amok uh tom sodas like you get like if we're dueling you know one shot you know you ask what chance man you get in the leg man you're down and knee. like you said you're down that yeah. knee you know what i mean yeah. you know um and i think there's a value to it it's consequence you're you're understanding the consequence yeah you know yeah <laughs> So I know, each to their own, what we're going to do, huh? <laughs> that, remaining, that last question, one more time. Sure, oh, absolutely, absolutely. So at some, so this is from Steve. So at some point, could you say what, so from thus far from the islands that, you know, I guess that, you know, you absolutely visited or what you were exposed to. At some point, could you say what principles and tactics, combative training methods and parentheses, you found most useful and that you hold on to present day? Okay. 
So uh, we have to put ourselves into context. Um, one of the things Guru Dan and Asanto told us once in one of the classes that he was teaching was, let's face it, we're, unless you are a police officer or a military person where you have to, you're out there putting your life on the line every day, we are recreational martial artists. Mm. Uh, like ah, I'm not a recreational martial artist. I'm a real martial artist. No, you're you're about to go to war. You know, and <laughs> and then I and then he goes, it's okay. What we're doing is we're recreating the techniques and training methods that our warrior ancestors have handed down to us, and that's what we're recreating. That what makes us recreational. Okay, so like oh, of course you're right. You know, of course. I'm not a police officer, right? Mm -hmm. So what's my goal? What's my goal? My goal is to remain safe Get and to avoid, <laughs> to avoid problems. Yeah, okay? my, it, my goal is not, uh, I have to go to the problem. That's the police, that's yeah. the fire department, or that's the military. My goal is, ah, I see a problem down there. I'm going that way, right? So, so being aware, is probably the biggest one. Mm. Um, uh, avoiding problems, not being sucked into it. What's our problem as males? We get sucked in with testosterone poisoning. Yeah. You know. Uh, are you looking at me? What's your problem? You got something to say? Know. You know, yeah. an invasion of space. Now we're face to face with each other, and a knife can come out. You can't defend against it. I know, and you only see it, and you're getting freaking plunged like three no. times. I know. If, you, if we're face to face, you can't even stop me from punching you in the face. I, I can't it, stop you either. I don't care who you are or what you younger. know. I know, I know, I know. The things because we do are younger. You have violated the one arm's distance rule, right? Yeah. If, if, if we are within one arm's distance, I'm sorry, it's over. The reaction time is not there. You, you will not be able to do it. No, you, I mean, reaction versus action. No, it's, it's, just it. not, fair. it's not fair. You're just a little farther away and you get your hands up just a little bit. What's going on? What can yeah. I do? You've got a chance. Okay. But up here, there's no chance. I know. It's crazy. When you see these young people, they're doing that. Like, yeah, I'm like what are you yeah. freaking doing? You know, so, that's just a, yeah. So, so these are the things that I'm, I'm trying to remember as I work my way through life, you know, um, awareness, avoidance, uh, distance. Mm. Okay, so if, it if the time is done and now you got to go, basically you have to go in. Yeah. And you have to go in without any hesitation. You have to have a knowledge of the vital spots. What are those? Eyes, under the nose, throat, the groin. That's about it, you know. Those types of attacks will, will give consistent, uh, repeatable responses. Take a look at the UFC. You know, those guys are the toughest guys around. Boom, thumb in the eye. Uh, uh, uh. I know, that's it. I know. I Even know. wearing a cup, kicked in the groin. Oh, hang on a second. You know, know. time out. Right? Time out. Yeah. So that's what I would, that, that's my answer for that. No, it's a good one. Good one. No, thank you. And we're going to, um, Man, we got okay. We might, man. I don't know, Mike. We might be. Uh, oh, you for a part three. <laughs> All right. So we made it from from uh, Manila on Luzon to Mindoro. Okay. To Panay, uh, okay. Negros. I'm I'm being given this demonstration of Pakiti Tirsha, which I've never seen before. A lot of stick and knife. A lot of knife. Okay. He's giving me a chance to to try some of the sparring gear. Then we go to Cebu. Uh, and Cebu, of course, is known as the the, the hotbed of Eskrima. Yeah, and, Eddie, um, the whole, yeah. So the fa the place that we're going to go would be Kakoi Kanyete, the Dose yeah. Pades School. So Dose Pades, 12 pairs of hands. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the timing, but back in the 30s, you know, these different groups that were always fighting each other decided, hey, what if we get together and we kind of combine our techniques? And mm -hmm. that's what it was. It was 12 styles, dose pades, 12 pairs of hands. And they created this training method. And the Kanyete people kind of rose to the top. Yeah. Uh, and so they had their own training center there.
Mm. And we happened to arrive on a Sunday early. And so Roberto said, hey, Sundays is judo day. Judo day? Yeah. Oh, no, that's right up your alley. Boy <laughs> has his students learn judo first because he thinks learning the rolls and the falls and the locks and other things will be very helpful later for and his own, own version, which he calls escrito. Yeah, right, right. right. Sure. Uh, so that's what I did, you know. I'm, I'm from America. I know they're say it's right up your alley. I'm sure. Come on in. <laughs> so that's what we did. And, you know, judo is great because it's a, it, it's, it's, it's wrestling, it's rough and tumble, it's, it's throws, it's takedowns, it's chokes. And uh, had a great time, you know, wrestled with everybody. And mm. they get a chance to identify, you know, who you are. What sure. kind of attitude do you have? Are we going to invite you tonight? So we, you know, passed that test yeah. and got invited to come back for a demonstration. And I have to say, it was an awesome demonstration. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Is that right? It was that yeah. night, you know, they had, they had the, the lanterns going. Okay. You know, um, it was in a big arena. And they just demonstrated everything. They demonstrated mm. horse stick and double stick and stick and knife, but swords and blades. They, they did the bull whip. You know, um, oh, yeah. they did stuff on the ground. They did a screedo. Uh, it, it was just an awesome, awesome demonstration. Oh, man. And back then, you, you know, he, he still had him when he was younger, too. And wow, 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 wow. Yeah. And so, okay, so Cebu. Um, let's, I just want to make sure because Elric said something great. I just don't well, want to. One of the other things, things that Cebu and Kakoi is I met Kakoi's uncle, Momoi. Yeah. Oh, so he, San Miguel. Oh yeah. What's that? San, San Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so you know, he he kind of learned and knew the the older older styles. Right. So when I saw him and uh, and Illustrisimo talking together, and they were making oh, nice. motions nice. together about stuff, uh, yeah. and then also met um, Dioni Cagnetti, who also just recently passed. Who just passed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and speaking uh, of passing, I think it was Elric that said, "Hey, you know, I really enjoyed your part one. That was the death anniversary of Tatam." You know what? And I did. I tell you, that was not that was that was not done intentionally done. I guess sure. I I can take credit for that. Totally cool. <laughs> but it was, it was <laughs> coincidental. <laughs> She's looking down on us right now. Isn't that amazing, though? The day of your interview, like, we couldn't have planned that better. I, but I'd love to take credit for that, but I'm telling you right now. No, it's better this way. It was it's totally better this way. Know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, met, met all those guys. And eventually I did some business, business with Dioni because he said, hey, you know, you're going back. Um, uh, I can provide um, sticks and other things to you, and you can do, like, an import-export thing. Um, and, and I did that. I shipped some some sticks from him um, and sold them to, to some different schools and to some martial arts companies. Wow, that's awesome! Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, okay, we kind of covered this. Uh, 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 number four question. I just want to make sure we uh, it stood out in your travels for us. You, you the islands that stood out. You're you're just mentioning now. Okay, obviously it did feel alive and all that. Okay, um, I just you know again I just want to make sure. Uh, I'm not missing anything from uh, from LR care. Um, so what? Um, okay. His next question, and I, I and I, you're probably going to get to this island. I'm assuming is uh, Bantanyan. Um, Bantanyan. Bantanyan Island. Yeah. Bantanyan Island, 1985. So was and his question is the martial culture was it still alive there when you went there? Is his question? Well, uh, so so the idea is we're in Cebu. And uh, all right, where are we going next? Um, can can we go to Mindanao? Well, Mindanao is is Muslim, you know, it's big time Muslim, mm. and uh, it's not so safe down there. Yeah, well, uh, we might well, go. <laughs> I'd like I'd like to go. Um, okay, maybe, maybe we can go to to uh, Davao, it's the city of Davao. So we take the boat, the Banka boat. Um, to Davao, um, we get situated there. And in Davao, uh, we saw two styles. Um, one was an Arnie style, 
Um, and we just called it the unknown style. The unknown. <laughs> the unknown style, because it was just a guy that, that yeah. Roberto met. And the guy goes, I, I know our niece. I learned it from my dad. Okay. And so we got together in the night, and he showed us some stuff. And he obviously had skill. Um, and, and of course, what is the name of your style, please? It's yeah. like, I don't know. I mean, I learned it from my dad. Is that so, yeah. I don't, there's no name. I just know how to hit with a stick. Right. So we called it the unknown style. Uh, let's see, what else? We, we saw in Davao, Hollow Hollow Arnie's. Hmm, that's, that's new. Hollow, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying it's new. I, I just never heard of it, is what I should yeah, say. Just, I think Hollow Hollow it means mixy mixy. It's just a mix. Oh, make a blend of stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, just a, just a okay. blend. Yeah. Uh, Nobody on here has heard of that. Let us know. Yeah. We saw um, a guy named Modesto. Uh, and he showed Dose Padas and something Ju Kar R. It was probably his combo of Judo, Karate, and Arnis, Ju Kar. Um, yeah, and if I remember correctly, that was at a YMCA. Um, and, and a lot of times okay. they would do their demonstration and they would ask me, would you show something you know, from what you do? Mm. And almost always I would show them some small circle jujitsu drills. Drill one to the next and to the next um, and I would call for a volunteer so they would come out and we would make them I would make them do the dance of pain ah, oh, ah, oh. Oh, and Wally J stuff yeah. right. oh man I could just see it now hey I'm sorry guru we do uh, yeah okay El hollow would mean make sense okay um just backing up just a bit Elric's question is was it called the screamer or knees for the unknown style, or he or he just called it oh, unknown? The unknown style card it called it Arnis. Oh, Arnis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I got a couple more questions that we'll have to back up to, but but go ahead. I don't want I don't want to stop. Okay. You from here. So so we made it down to Davao, um, and and we saw a couple of things, and and now um, Illustrissimo is saying, I want to go home. We're not not back to Manila, but I want to go to where oh, I was. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if this map shows Bantayan Island. I don't see it, but but it's it's down it's down here. Oh, wow. So it's way down. Yeah. And uh, okay. Davao, okay. if I remember correctly, Davao is more over here. Towards the west, okay. Yeah, okay. and Zamboanga is more over here towards the east. Towards the east, okay. okay. Yeah. Wow, wow. So anyway, we make a plan, and we're going to go to Bantayan Island. And uh, again, it's by boat. And um, to tell you the truth, I, I don't really know how it happened. But when we got there, it pretty much, the, the whole... The whole island was there to greet Illustrissimo. I mean, it was a major party. Major. He was a legend back then. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it was food, it was music, it was dancing. You know, yeah. he was drinking the tuba, the, the coconut wine. Oh, okay, okay. Not tuba, coconut wine. I've heard, I, I've heard that, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has health benefits too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it was just it was a it's a party right out of the really word that he was coming. Interesting. I, I don't know. Uh, That's what I mean. Yeah, interesting. Maybe interesting. Roberto was ma able to make a phone call. Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, I don't just know. But, but it, 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 it wasn't to, from what I remember. It wasn't like we landed and nobody knows we're here. It was pretty much the tongue. He's back. Come on. Yeah, they knew. They knew. We're, we're ready for you over here. Um, uh, I don't know if you've got the pictures. And by the way, any of the pictures that I have sent you, I'm yeah. totally fine with you sharing. Oh, because I was going to ask you. I just didn't want to go and just start. I, I posted some on just yeah. to kind of give some um, excitement yeah. as far as you coming on. But yeah, I have all of them. And if whoever, folks that are watching, you know what I could do? I could just, I could post them all in that for my discussion. I could do that. I'll do that. Yeah. Just so everybody can see them. But I'm, thank you very much for offering. I just didn't want to go ahead and just do that but you no know, i mean if you don't share stuff like that i mean same thing who's who's interested who's no, yeah 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 hey, mike can you show me bantayan island no one no. <laughs> you yeah. know we're talking i'll pull up a few white while you're while you're going yeah. 
Sure. So some of those pictures show, uh, you know, we, we, had, we, we cut open a huge fish that we, that we, that we smoked and, and, and uh, ate later on. Um, mm -hmm. Shows different aspects of the, the thatched huts, huts that people were living in. Yeah. Yeah. Here's so, one. So that was, that was, you know, at one of the pension houses during the day waiting for, for Roberto to come back. Or maybe he just came back because he took the picture. And it's just, you know, there's a training session. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, Jeez, man. I'm no. I'm no, what, what's he doing there? Is that a... Can, I can't... Oh, it, it looks like he's maybe coming in with the butt. Yeah, from here, it looks like correct. If I, okay. I, I hope I'm correct in that as well. Yeah. Um, he loved the pluma. He used the pluma a lot. The, yeah, the, the infamous yeah, pluma yeah. technique. Huh? This one. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon Ricketts told me a story. He liked to kind of, like, he would draw, like, his name. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you, did, did, did. yeah. <laughs> and I'll pull up another one. Um. So that was, so go, yeah, so go ahead on the island. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was the main thing. Then, then he took us to visit a relative, um, a lady. Uh, I don't know really if she was a sister of his or some mm. other close relative, but obviously somebody that, that knew him and knew him well. And she knew his screamer. And so she showed us some of the things that she was doing. Wow. Yeah. This is in Rizal Park right here. And he was yeah. showing how to get out and then come in. Yeah. And how to use Abanico and the checking hand. My yeah. question was, and I, I would do this with a lot of different instructors. I would give them five or six basic attacks. What would you do with this? What would you do with oh, this? Okay. 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 To see. And I said, if somebody was coming at you with a baseball bat, what would you do? Okay. And so that was this two-handed thing. Gotcha. Okay. Ah, I see. And right, and he can. He went to the outside. I got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. And I'll show these folks who are watching now. I, I'm going to post all these later uh, tonight, and you guys will be able to see them all. Yeah. Okay. I I remember that we got taken to a, a cave uh, where there were lots of bats in the cave. You know, okay. so you walk in there, and now it's squish, squish, squish. What are we walking on? Oh, that's bat guano. Ooh, yeah, I would have been, I think I would have been out of there. Yeah. <laughs> of there. Look up, Mike, what do you see? I see lots of lights. Those are eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, th I don't, I think I would have checked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but it was great. It was great to go there. And, um, and then from there, we went to the island of Polo. And Polo, he spent um, many years growing up. The formative um, years, right? With yeah, the salt and yeah, yeah. Learned to scream and apparently that's where he ended up killing his first human. Yeah. And the, that was, uh, um, you know, he even at age thirteen, apparently he liked tuba. He liked the the the. Um, oh, uh, even at an early wine. age, he, he liked that wine, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he went to a liquor store to yeah, buy weird. something, um, and apparently there was a Muslim dude that took offense to that and um, and drew, drew a Chris. And you know, just, just like the other uh, tribes people that we visited, they like, you know, they've actually, they actually use their, their bolo. That they yeah, carry. yeah, it's, it's just not for ornament. <laughs> carrying their Rambo knife in their pack, you know, they actually use it. So, uh, you know, he took his out and um, apparently he was able to uh, prac shown or, or, you know, beat him yeah. to, the, to the punch. And that's what the story goes. Um, yeah. This is a heavy weapon. Yeah, I mean, the bro, it's it thick. Heavy. It was fine. Yeah. On the, yeah. Apparently, I don't know if it was like this or it was like that, but yeah. the word is he took the guy's head off. I, you know what Burton told me? And again, don't quote me on this. I'm just sharing. So folks that are listening, don't quote me on this. I'm just telling you what Tatan told Burton and what Burton told me is he mentioned, this is, and this is kind of significant. He said, because the Moro was angry, he pulled back. And because he pulled back, Ilshisma went to Gadena Real and took the head off. But what he mentioned was, and he was 
I, I, what seemed to be very honest and forthright to yeah. Burton. Yeah. Had he not done that, and he just if he just drew and went, right. Bill Schumel said that that might have been tough. Right. <laughs> so and, and correct. And, and I'm again, quoting you on this, Steve Brody. I'm quoting you. On this. You, you go ahead. You go back to getting adrenalized. Okay, what happens when you get adrenalized? Ah! Okay, yeah. that's what happens, right? Mm -hmm. And and Illustrissimo was able, even at that age, genetic roll of the die, was able to maintain an enough steadfast mind, so it was just boom. That's so the story, and this is what he shared with Bert, and I found it fascinating because, like you just mentioned, that key thing, like out of anger, because a guy, because I guess it seems like it was kind of, uh, um you know, just my, kind of mouthing off to him, like, right. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, we'll put that into a binding and safety. Yeah. So yeah. I know you will. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing that was said to me, and it was also mentioned in College Illustrissimo, because that, that encounter is mentioned, is that the, 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 the Moro's body kept on moving yeah i heard Wasn't that too cool. which is man can you i can't even imagine that that's just like you know it's there uh, and this body is just like on its own accord just <laughs> you know I, i'm sorry i can't make that up i can't make that up you know if i'm gonna try to fake some story about killing somebody i'm not gonna go there no 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 i'm not i'm not i'm not doubting or disputing it yeah 100 right yeah i mean no, uh, no. it's like okay I, I i'm listening to what you're saying and yeah yeah definitely hopefully <laughs> yeah. i'll never have to experience yeah that. don't worry i won't be drawing a chris on you don't worry <laughs> yeah. man so, so so we we did go to holo uh and we saw what did we see down there we saw the, some taus of house of uh empty hand art it was known as they called it sebring yeah oh, wow that's nice. okay sebring. did anybody else hear that never heard of it before yeah no same here yeah but it was mainly empty hands so very sea lot like but no definitely because i mean it makes sense minute now right right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that was the impression i got that it was kind of sea lot related yeah. i've never heard of sea Sebring or Sebring. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And then, and then, uh, so now yeah. we're down there. Uh, and, and, like, we can't really go any farther. And finally, Illustrissimo tells to Robert, you know, I, I think I have, I've got to go. You know, I have to go back home. I got to go back to my family. Oh, we get back to Manila because you guys are about the 30. Uh, so, yeah. so for the, Alec had a question. I, that's you might have already covered. I, I'm just going to look at his questions. Um, as a culture, with your okay, you kind of already said. It. So his question was, what was it like there, as far as the culture and you know, were the arts different as a whole to what you experienced before? And you kind of with the sea line already kind of touched right. on. Right. So <clears throat> the I guess that the main thing and what. Don Drager talked about this, is if you want to learn um, as much as you can about a fighting art, it, it really helps to go to the, the country of origin. Where was it born? Experience their culture because it's more integrated into their culture. Um, here in the U.S., it's, it's a kind of an interesting, cool slash geeky experience. You know, we're all kind of martial arts geeks. Mm, no, yeah. you're not into our world people are looking at you like wow you know that, that guy spends a lot of time learning yeah, about yeah. slicing yeah. and dicing punching and kicking you know what if what if what if um and you know so you got to really be into that world which is true for anything if you're into yeah, dungeon right yeah. you're gotta be geek. immersed in it yeah, you're yeah. Geek, you know but in the country it's it's this is part of our history and this is part of what we do. It'd be like in Hawaii, of course we're doing hula. Of course. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, um, yeah. if, you know and, and if you're lucky and you're good in men's hula, you might get picked out to be invited to try out for the Hawaiian lua. Right. You know, the Hawaiian yeah. fighting style. But you have to be tested in the hula first because they want good, good 
body movement out of the hula. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's just it's more integrated. It's more organic. It's 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 not that it's no big deal, but but it's it's part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Having said that, you know there aren't the younger generation aren't really into it very much. We want to get out of the of the villages. We want to go to the city. We want to get the phones. We want to do the disco. We want to make money. We want to go to the U.S. Mm. And and I I have to say that that when I returned um, to the U.S. and started training again at the Inosanto Academy, I realized it's right here in my backyard anyway. You know. Yes. Yes. I'm glad I went. Yes. It's a sure, sure. Right, right. awesome experience, you yeah. know, um, but a lot of, a lot of things we're, we are looking for are already in our backyard. Sometimes it, we just didn't look for, uh, I got you. Right. Right. No, no, I got you. What, um, just, I want to back up a bit. I know you already spoke on this, but, um, there's um, sometimes I'm saying, I work at another question and, um, I was question and going back to uh, GM and my boys, you know, uh, talking together. Any memories of footwork of the different movements they showed up when when those two moved together? Did they, in fact, even move together? Or was it more conversation? No, no they, they were not training together. They, they were just talking. They were just talking talk. about different hand motions. You saw their body move, you know. And yeah. Okay. To okay. Me, it, 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 it just it just had a little bit of that in it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But just the fact that they were talking, I'm sure it was fascinating. Yeah. You know, so I just thought, let's see if we can separate those two old guys. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. God, <laughs> my God. Just the man. What a man. So he's got to get back. Unfortunately, you fly back, it sounds like. Um, okay. So to tell you the truth, I, I would really have to read this again in more detail to find no, out no, no, no worry this has been t- no Here, worries here's what i think happened um what i think happened i know roberto and i went back together we sent illustration back alone oh, on a faster okay. boat i got you okay, okay. So okay. like an express boat that went from holo all the way up to manila okay and okay. we worked our way back boats and buses and jeepneys we worked our way back I see. Okay. Uh, we didn't take as much time going, and our mission at that point was to get back home. Was to get back home? We just did. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like okay, we're gonna go see more stuff. No, it was. No, no, you were just trying uh, to. Get home. Okay, uh, we're out of money, and we're yeah, out of money. Let's go back. <laughs> you know, and, and to tell you the truth, I'm really glad that that happened because by the time I got back to Manila, there were letters waiting for me from my dad that said um mike uh, you don't know this but you you are um being evicted from the apartment that you left your buddy to take care of you because i was a resident manager in that building well things didn't work out and he left and so you're losing your place so um, by the way you're also (laughs) essentially bankrupt Uh, you just don't know it because i'm your banker Thank you, Dan. I suggest that you return home as quickly as possible. (laughs) That's so funny. As your banker, I would like to recommend that you return home immediately. Love, Dad. (laughs) Love, that's that is classic. As your banker, (laughs) as your financier. (laughs) Correct, correct. And so, so at age twenty-eight, I'm I'm still being bailed out by my parents this is not good this This is this is this is not positive (laughs) no and so now i'm finally getting mike you have to start rowing your own boat yeah so now start making a living but it sounds like you got you got the stuff out of your system you got your realization you're ready to go home and be an adult (laughs) <laughs> i guess yeah so you know but but you know that's that's life and, and sometimes it takes people longer yeah, than others absolutely. to actually get it you know but that's what happened so so i get back and um you know now now it's like okay i gotta pay off debts i have to get a job that's how i got involved in the the, the real estate property management business and then you know 
Oh, so they, you know what? Things happen for a reason. You know, things happen. So when you get back, you don't just stop training. So you, you return to the academy, which you. I, I do, but not right away. Um, oh. You know, back. So then um, I, I ended up going back, living with my parents, of course. Uh, they have a place for me, naturally. And um, that's in Torrance. And, and I'm working full time. And, uh, and, and, and really, there's, there was a kind of a down period where, mm -hmm. like, hmm, you know, am I really motivated to, to go back and, and get going back at the, at the IMB? Because now it was no longer the Kali Academy, it's the IMB. Right, you had two so, separate now, right. And, and I really was over at, back in Culver City, but that's a big drive now. So mm -hmm. I kind of stopped training for maybe a year until I moved back to the west side. Um, and then I started back at the academy. Okay. Yeah, maybe yeah. Just a year. Just about that, that was like 87. 87 or so? Okay. About that, yeah. And um, pretty soon after that, I got a very um, uh, pleasant uh, surprise because Guru Dan asked me to start teaching a jujitsu program at the academy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So uh, look, uh, that's awesome. You know, thank you very much, Guru. Uh, you can have Friday nights from 7 o'clock until 10. And before uh, that class was Salem Asli, he was doing Sabat. Yeah, so that's what I did. And uh, by that time, I, I was merging my experience with Kali Eskrima Arnis and, and my close quarter jiu-jitsu. So okay. it wasn't a typical jiu-jitsu class. First of all, I called it cement jiu-jitsu. We didn't <laughs> use any mats. Oh, man. Very occasionally, we'd bring the mats out if we were going to do actual throws. Yeah, okay, okay. But let's not do throws. You know, throws are not easy. Throws are kind of hard. I guess somebody that doesn't want to go. Takedowns are a lot easier. They're a lot easier. So, mm -hmm. and, and you can do controlled takedowns with the cement, you know, as yeah, long as you're yeah, yeah. you can control them. Um, we did it just like we normally train, t-shirts, sweats, tennis shoes. Uh, we definitely worked in uh, focus pads, kicking shields, tie pads, you know. We mm -hmm. used heel palms instead of punches, finger okay. jabs, uh, we, knees, side kicks, round kicks, mm -hmm. okay. tie boxing drills, we got in there. Um, and then we got into what I call cement, Rondori, where you're you're playing around doing doing um, hand gripping and sweeping okay. and takedowns. We did not spend a lot of time rolling around on the ground. On the ground, okay. You know, we did when we did that, we got the mats out. It was just sure. a little bit too dangerous to do that. Um, and then we definitely did did weapon stuff, stick and knife. So awesome. that was the cement jujitsu program. Sounds like a really neat, eclectic, you know, it combination was, of stuff. We had a lot of different people coming in and out on Friday nights. No, that no, was, man. That sounds, wow, wow. So, all right, can you, when do, because um, I don't, I mean, we're past the hour and a half, but, so I, I don't, but I'm, we can do this. Um, <laughs> um, when, okay, so you're going on, when did you, because um, I know we're going to kind of, Fast forward a bit here, but when did you get into Serata? Like, what made you? Okay, you know, all right. Question. I'm sorry. So, yeah. When you like, when you get back, did you have any interest at all of like pursuing KI or some of the stuff that you were exposed to over there, or you were like you alluded to, you were satisfied with what you had right there yeah. at the academy? Yeah, it was. It was. It was just an experience. I got you. Okay, no, no. just okay. an experience. So right. Just like my experience doing Shindo Musoryu Jo. There's nobody here that knows that style. Okay. You know, I learned a little, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm down here and you got to go up here. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it was just an experience and it was a great experience. But but uh, if you want to continue your training, go to the academy. That's where that's where you're going to go. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, when I started at the academy back then, um, the style that maybe Guru Dan was training at, at in at that time was Serata. So Maybe. that's what guy, uh, yeah, okay, so, right, you kind of change. Like that. Right, okay. because he would do that a lot. He no, it's right here. And then he tested out on us, <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, so we would learn inside sweep, sh sh boom, pop, 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 outside sweep, bang, bang, pop, 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 you know, low wing, boom, 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 
you know, we would learn those. Uh, but we only learned the five angles. Okay. And we were told there's actually 12, but you can, by learning the five, you can handle the 12, you know, okay. but we're going to move on and do something else. We're going to go into Sinawali and then we're going to go into okay. Numerado, which is a completely different style and, you know, okay. all, all of this stuff. But there was just something in me that's like, I want the full 12. Right, I, I want need, to know what I the need, full 12 I need, are. Like, I need more. To, I need more. To, like, right. I, Right. So many decades later, um, I just happened to be in West L.A. at a martial arts uh, uh, supply company and I saw a flyer and it talks about Kabbalah, Angel Kabbalah's Sarada Eskrima, um, mm -hmm. private lessons taught by um, Guru Khalid Khan, master number 13. Um, so and a phone number. So I call him up. He answers the phone and um, he says, I'm, I'm new to the area, but I'm offering um, 10 private lessons, 90 minutes a piece for $300. Wow. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, that sounds good. Uh, he says, we can meet today. I can give you a free lesson if you like it. And, you know, we can do it. Um, sure. I'm in Hollywood. And if you would like, um, you know, we can meet in Hollywood. and." We can go to a park and we can do it. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. All right. Yeah, yeah. So I call my wife, Meredith. I explain what's happening. And she says, let me get this straight. You uh, called up some guy. He says he's an expert in some fighting system. You're going to meet this stranger in a park in Hollywood and you're going to give him $300. Mm. Is that about right? I said, well, I mean, it's not exactly like that, but basically, yeah, that's about right. And uh, she said, how about if I come with you? Now, Meredith is a, um, a full contact self-defense instructor herself. So um, she can definitely handle herself. And she's a great um, bodyguard for me to have. So I said, sounds good. And then I called another buddy of mine. Um, and he also was interested in Serata. He came. We met this gentleman, uh, Khalid Khan. Uh, we went to the park. He showed stuff. You could tell immediately this guy knows what's happening. And um, that's how it started. And wow. we, we did the 10 lessons with him. Um, and then for a couple of years, um, I did some very hard, good, regular training with him. My knuckles were quite bloody for, for quite a while because my knuckles were getting hit a lot. Um, just That's just what was happening. Um, and then, then you know, it was, we parted ways. We had a little, you know, um, difference of opinion on a couple of things. Um, but then a couple of years later, we came back, and then okay. we started doing more training. And I learned his. He has seventy blocks and counters that he teaches as the Kabbalah system. Okay. And, and so I went through all that, and he gave me um, a basic instructor rank, and that, that's good. I, I accept that. And uh, then I went to Stockton, and in combination with, with uh, becoming a, a student of a police baton training method called the Koga method of police baton, that was happening during the day in Stockton. Then at night, I visited uh, uh, the, the son of Angel Kabbalas. I visited um, his school. I visited okay. Darren Tabone in his school. Visited, yeah. Wade Williams in his school. Uh, I visited the Giron school. Here so I, I at least spent about a week visiting different schools in Stockton and, and uh, either participating with the Serata or watching the others. No, oh, fantastic. And yeah. we're, we're so, trying to get uh, Darren on here too. If I had to choose a style to say, what style do you practice? It would be Serata. Yeah, I, no. Okay. It was oh, yeah. Fast, close quarter style. Um, there's no need to learn, continually learn more and more and more and more and more of a little, a little, a little, a little, you know, why not choose one and go yeah. to That's kind of what I, it's funny you mention that, like, um, that's, I think that's going to be my, uh, what I'm going to do from now on, from this point on, like, I kind of like, in the last six months, I've been like, really thinking like, because um, I was kind of bouncing around, but for one reason or another, not necessarily was conscious or I wanted to, yeah. just circumstantial, but now I'm thinking like, you know what? I think it's just time to 
really deep, go, you know, dive deep into like one. Yeah. You know, it like doesn't have to be to the exclusion of anything else. You yeah. should yeah. be able to go into any Filipino martial arts style and see what they're doing and go, sure, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's just angles, you know? Um, and they have different training methods and yeah, so yeah, it really comes down to the methodology. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Really, really to the methodology. So we're going to kind of, cause I know, you know, I don't want to keep you all night. I, I appreciate you going over time here. Believe me, oh, believe me, as well as everybody else here. Um, so, uh, how are they different? Um, so Alec has got a question in regards to, um, MasterCon, um, training, uh, teaching methods for uh, for MasterCon, how they differ from the Anasano blend, for instance. Uh, okay. Any, as far as the methodology? Well, um, definitely, it's, it's, let's compare it with the Illustrissimo when I was with him. Um, definitely, it's more organized, you know? And, and so when something's more organized, you, you feel like, okay, here I am, here's what I need to do, here's where I'm going, here are the basic drills, you know? So, you, you get a, a more of a feeling of uh, kind of the environment that you're around rather than just mm. like this, do like this. Uh, with Khalid, it was always private training. Um, occasionally we would have, there'd be another guy there, but, but he was a private training guy. And to tell you the truth, I prefer private training uh, more yeah. than working with the group because yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree. it's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, yeah. You know, you can deal with things as they come up. And, mm. you know, with the group stuff, uh, you, you can kind of get lost. You know, there's always... Depending the on the size of where you come into the group, what time you come in. Yeah. 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 And um, I know for, for me at the academy, I was perfectly fine learning the, the June Fon and the Kali. That's fine. Mm. And, and now, now we're doing Thai boxing. Okay. All uh, right, go now it's now it's no longer focus pads and kicking shields. Now it's it's those really heavy tie pads. Okay, well, mm. we'll do that. all right, uh, okay, good. Now, now it's savat. Okay, so so now the savat team's coming, and all right, I'm doing that and doing that. Oh, well, that's cool. That's good. And and, and you, don't get me wrong, you're getting excellent exposure, and excellent sure. training. Okay. Um, you know, uh, and now we're into um, uh, we're into sila. You know, like, uh, and oh, be, but before that, we are, we are giving uh, salutations to all the different countries that we are learning from. We're bowing, we're saluting, oh, we yeah. are, huh? and we are, huh? and, and I remember one class in particular, it was, I can't even keep up with the bows. <laughs> You lost let me. Alone, let alone the, the techniques, man. It's the you lost me at the salute. You know, I know I'm back in the Philippines. I'm I'm that Kali guy. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to go to Indonesia. <laughs> oh man, I'd be lost too, man. If I went in there, okay, we're gonna bow to all the styles. <laughs> right. So, so now at the academy, um, Grodan is teaching uh, one art at a time for about an hour. Another art. Another art. Another art. Right. But it, it's all evolution. You know, he's, he's mm -hmm. trying to, number one, have his own martial arts experience. And, mm -hmm. and he's going to bring in the best because he can. Um, he's going to learn one on one because he can. And then he's going to share the best with his students because yeah, yeah, that's what sure. a good teacher does. And that's one of the things that's always really impressed me with the full instructors that have come out of the Inosanjo Academy is mm -hmm. you know, not only are they good from what they've learned from Guru Dan, but they've got basic instructor level at a lot of these other arts, whether it's Thai mm -hmm. boxing or maybe it's Silat or, or Savat, you know, I mean, it's- Yeah, it's like you come out of there, you get, I mean, you get, you get Thai, Thai run. I mean, you get, um, you know, obviously the Bude Nagar, generally speaking, you know, a lot of women know from his yeah. plan. I mean, yeah, so you come out, you definitely come out, yeah. you know, well packaged. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, wow, so then, all right, so you kind of continue, you're doing that, and then um, you kind of, uh, so when did you kind of get back into the hot apology? I mean, was it through the recent conversations with um, Michael? Or... Some, of, some of that, some of that. Here, here's what happened to me 
on my personal journey. So at the academy, <clears throat> going back and learning di different things, okay, good. Uh, teaching the cement jiu-jitsu class, a great honor. Thank you, Guru. Uh, sure. and then I get invited to come watch a women's self-defense graduation. That's a model mugging graduation. Some people have heard about model mugging. So some people don't uh, don't know the name, but but we're known for the, the guys with the big head. You know, it's it's a football oh. <laughs> helmet with two and a half inches of foam, uh, football shoulder pads, uh, uh, chest protector, super groin protector, hip, knee, shin protectors. We are extremely well protected so that we can take mm. full power, pokes to the eye, chop to the throat, knee to the groin, and knee to the head, kicks to the head, you name it, we can handle it, okay? Because the gear is so heavy duty and so good, and believe it or not, we have pretty good mobility there. I can actually jump in yeah. the air, spin around, and take a fall, you know? And, and I, I can move pretty good. We, sure. we it's not designed, to have you in the gear, me in the gear, and we we bounce off each other. No, 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 no. no I understand. What it's designed, it's called asymmetrical training. Now, you as the student don't have to worry about hurting me, your partner. You don't mm. have to worry about it. You know, you can poke me in the eye, you can chop me in the throat, you can hit me with your stick, you know, um, you can knee me in the groin, oh, you kind of missed. Knee him again, only harder. You know, knee him in the head. Um, yeah. And I'm talking full power. Okay, wow. um, so now the students are able to to practice full force and full speed. This is how you have to practice. You get, that's how you got to do it. If you want the the fastest yeah. result, you can't practice like okay, yeah, that that would have really done it. You know, oh okay, you know, oh, did I hit you too hard? You all right? God, I'm really sorry mm -hmm. I hit you in the nuts. You're gonna be okay, <laughs> you know. So once once you create that environment. Uh, then, then you add some some realistic attacks, and these are all these were primarily for women's self defense. So, first of all, mm -hmm. I go to this graduation. How much training have they had? Twenty hours, Mike. Hmm. I've taught women's self defense before, fifteen hours at a time, and the only thing that I finished at that, after fifteen hours, that I felt like was, I hope they never get attacked. Because mm. there's no way that 15 hours is going to give anybody any useful skill. Yeah, I got a whole Sorry. argument Sorry. on that, man. Weapon on that. Okay. <laughs> so I go. I'm sitting in the front seat, front row, watching. And I see a line of women, housewives, obviously not martial artists, um, right, 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 waiting right. in line. I see the big dude come out in the gear. Let me just show you the helmet. Sure. That's the helmet. Wow, look at that. This, that, this that allows looks, the eyes. Okay. That looks like terrestrial. It's a football <laughs> helmet. Okay. Jeez. Right. And what it does, it sits on football shoulder pads. Okay. 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 So that when you get hit, it's like you're in a it, you're, you're in a bumper car. Uh, it puts your whole body back. It does not snap your head back. Okay. Your whole body. So, so anyway, I see them now. They're doing the, the the muggers are doing verbal attacks. Hey, sweetie, why don't you come on over here? Why don't you show me some of that? Blah blah blah. Okay. Mm. But it's getting pretty personal, and it's getting pretty graphic. The women are maintaining their distance. You can see they're a little adrenalized. They're adrenalized, you know, but they're not frozen. The attack starts, they move in, they go for the eyes, they go for the throat, they go for the groin, uh, they knee in the head, they're down on the ground, they're, they're using their axe kicks. They are fighting like somebody I would not like to meet. I wouldn't want to meet her in an alley. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. That looks really rock'em sock'em. Um, I wonder what it's like in that gear. Are they really hitting that hard? So I go and talk to the um, the people that are running it, and uh, uh, they say, you know, we might have a job for you. Why don't you come and watch a class? So I watched the class, and they said, you know, if you'd like to participate, um, we like your energy, and you know, uh, we'll fit you for the gear. We can. You, you got to test it out. Put the groin protector on. 
you know, how, how do you like getting kicked in the nuts anyway? Uh, I don't know. I guess I have to try it out. Yeah, I guess you're going to find out. <laughs> and and no one, nobody that does this type of training knows if they're going to like it or not. They might look at the training and go, that's interesting. I could do that. Yeah. But you don't know if you want to get repeatedly kneed in the head. No, no, no of course you not. Know? Mm -hmm. You don't know if you can handle and you. Most of them say, I, I can handle the physical part, but I can't say the things that you have to say. Because we have to recreate yeah, situations I, I that have they've that actually too. gone through. So now you have students coming to, to your group um, that have been victimized. They've been raped. They've been molested. Um, they've been stopped. They, they have what I call negative training. They're not coming in a zero. They're coming in a negative 10. Negative. Act. That's a good point. Wow. And one of the other very important parts of this training is that the muggers are not the people that are doing the teaching. The female instructor the one that lives that life is the lead instructor. We are the support staff. Of course, we generally have more martial arts experience. Sure, we can show techniques, but it's way better for the woman to lead and show. I totally um, agree with you. It has to come yeah. from them. Totally agree. Correct. And and the way I got this lesson, I'm in a class I'm on a break, and one of the uh, women comes up and says, hey, Mike, um, I got a question for you. Whenever you're walking down the street and a woman is walking towards you, are, are, are you ever afraid? <laughs> no. And she's like, yeah, right. Um, that's the difference. Whenever I'm walking down the street and a man is walking that's towards a great me, point. And, great and, point. And I'm like, ah, I'm never point. going to know this. I'm not going to know that experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless oh, maybe, awesome. maybe if I'm in prison, yeah. then I'll know that experience. Yeah. Right. So it became um, a very important training for me. I felt like more and more I'm being able to use my martial arts experience for a group that is going to use it for sure. One out of three women are going to be attacked some way, Terrible. sexually assaulted some way. Right. So this is a group they're going to need this. All right. So mm. now my skills and experience can be used by this group eventually. We started doing it for, for police training too. So now we've got different groups of people that can use this type of full force scenario training. And after a, a bit of time, I had to decide where's my energy gonna go? Yeah. Am I going to learn another system, another system, another system, another system that I'm never going to use? No, yeah, I know, good point, good point. I'm never gonna use it, yeah. right? Uh, it's interesting. It's fun. Yeah, right. It's interesting. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Totally. But here's now, and not only that, then I got the training method, this adrenal stress scenario training, full force, mm -hmm. full speed, um, integrating the verbal, uh, using the dynamics, watching the, the, uh, the distancing. Uh, I, I just really took to it, and it, it really yeah. affected how I train and how I approach martial arts. Um, I went through my own injury deal too, hurt back, hurt neck, not necessarily from that training, just from getting yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, right. and, and so I, I took some time off from, all, I, I decided I was going to retire. You know, I've done it 20 years, time to retire. But mm -hmm. then I got better, things healed up. I got yeah. back into doing the full contact stuff. And um, a, a friend of mine invited me to start teaching in his backyard. So we started doing the screamer, we started doing the pads. Uh, you know, one little neighborhood school led to another, all outside, all in parks. Uh, finally, got back into the Serata. And oh, uh, I know. okay. You know, I'm, I'm always interested in sharing hoplology. I started doing the Drager presentation on uh, by, by doing it, uh, uh, what's it called? PowerPoint. You know, oh, yes, PowerPoint. I, I, yeah, yeah. I prefer to take that show on the road because. My personal experience, I think, helps communicate. No, I think, yeah, I definitely, I think they would get so much more out of it, like you presenting. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. So and, did and you? Then, here's the other thing about the hoplology thing. A sure. couple of years ago in Japan, um, a group put together um, a series of lectures called the Drager Legacy. Wow. Uh, four gentlemen, um, Hunter Armstrong was one, Phil Relnick. Liam Keeley, um, and Anthony, I believe Anthony Kudry, I think. Uh, 
they put this together and it was all of their experiences of Don Drager. Wow. Liam Healy explained, his lecture was all about, you wanna get involved in hoplology? Here's what happened to me. Here's how it affected my life. Yeah, he yeah. was on the last expedition in 79. He came back to, um, to South Africa. He became a, uh, got his master's degree in anthropology, specialized in cultural anthropology. And his life has been, has been uh, um, uh, formed by his experience with Don Drager and hoplology. So that would be a great lecture to listen to. All of them are, are good to listen to. Um, but I would say, if you want to learn about getting started in hoplology, go to that one. Yeah. So did you just meet Mai Powell recently then? And just yeah, yeah, just in the last couple of months. That's what I thought because you know it's so funny. Like I posted, like I was interviewing you. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, those guys are 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 like talking now. I'm like, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> which is which which is great. Um let's man, okay. Because I got a test run. All right, let's get to we're gonna fast forward here, but this has been absolutely wonderful. You are the president of the tea house. So I'm gonna pull up some pictures. What say okay. you on that? Sure. <clears throat> so again, all this is all martial art related. Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I, I was introduced to Shindo Musoryu Jojitsu in Japan. I trained it in nine months, uh, for nine months at the, at the Rembukan Dojo. I learned a little bit, some, uh, but not a lot. I learned some, the basic omote set, 12 kata, 12 kion, and then I left. Um, 10 years later, or, or no, five years later, I go back to Malaysia. I am with Drager. I train in Jodo for five days again. Mm. Great. Um, and then I leave. Uh, you know, there's still no instructor of Shindo Musoryu here in California. It wasn't until 2007 that I went back to Japan and then on my way to uh, Thailand and Malaysia because I wanted to go to the Thai-Burma fights. You know, oh, on, on the border, they have the fights where it's supposed to be with the, uh, the rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to go see those, and so I did. Uh, my wife, Meredith, said, you know, I'm not that interested in seeing that and the bugs and the humidity doesn't really, you know, thrill me that much, but I will meet you in Japan. So uh, that's what happened. I went to Malaysia, Thailand, Malaysia, met her in Japan. While I was there, I had a chance to go to the dojo of Don Drager, the other dojo of Don Drager, where he did Katori Shintoryu with, with Master mm -hmm. Otake. Yeah. I went that, out there without any introduction. I had written my own letter of introduction. I sent it to him. I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but it was um, kind of a dicey thing. But I made it. I got there. Uh, got I got introduced to him and was allowed to watch the training. Okay. okay. So anyway, I left that that experience. That's the whole story. Uh, but when I came back to the U.S., I was now kind of re-energized to look for the Koryu. Is there anybody doing Shindo Musoryu Jo Jo no mm. Jo Jitsu in Southern California? Yes. The Santa Monica Jodo Club. Okay. And and I, I didn't grow up in Santa Monica, but I went to Santa Monica High School. I went to Santa Monica College and then I went to UCLA. So Santa Monica is basically my hood. You know, so I got in touch with this guy, a man named Stephen Bellamy and his wife, uh, Chisato Mishima. They said, OK, you know, they listened to my story. Why don't you come demonstrate what you know? And then if you, you know, if you basically you pass the test, you can train with us. So that's what happened. Uh, again, long story, but started training. Uh, he was supposed to be here for, for many years. They, they were really going to relocate here. But something happened. He went back to Japan. We went with him in 2009. We came back, but he stayed in Japan with his wife and his wife's mother because she was having some medical issues. So I started going back and forth to Japan to do my Joe training with my sensei, Stephen Bellamy. And that's where I learned, I would say, 90% of my Joe. I learned it from Stephen Bellamy, who happens to be a British guy. Okay. Um, but when he left and didn't come back, what he said is, Mike, you're going to need to do some other things besides the Joe. You're going to have to find a school that will show you how to use the EI. Do mm -hmm. EI. You're going to need to learn about tea ceremony. 
I, I, can't, I can't say you must learn the tea ceremony, but you've got to learn about it. Okay. And so this, ha this tea house happens to be in my backyard. That's incredible. In, That's in incredible. Glendale. So Meredith and I are walking our dog, Lucy, by this thing. What's going on back there? That's, that's a Japanese house. What's going on over there? You know, it says it's a tea house. It's always closed because we always go up there on the weekends. Um, then we see a little ad, yoga in the tea house. Ha ha! Got we're it. signing up. So now we're in the tea house. We're doing yoga. Uh, I talked to the teacher and she said, I said, what's up with this tea house? She said, they used to do tea ceremony. The teacher retired. Her student, Keiko Nakata, has taken over she's been sick she just got better here's her number give her a call okay okay call her up you know oh hi i tell her a little my story japan martial arts blah 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 she says we're having a business meeting with some of my students if you'd like you can come to the house we can meet you so meredith and i go um it's keiko and a couple of her students we sit we talk we hear that they're they they have the ability to use this tea house and the whole garden one Sunday a month. Okay. On other weekends, the city of Glendale rents it out for private parties and weddings. They make money. So the fact that they're giving it to Keiko and her group, the Friends of Shosan, one weekend a month, one Sunday, is great. Only problem is Keiko doesn't have enough time. She's doing other things to utilize every, every month. So if she's not using it, the city comes in. She's not using it. The city comes in. So, okay. Wait okay. a minute. Wait a minute. I can use those Sundays. I will make something happen. You know. Yeah. You know, teach the Joe, or we're going to invite this person in. We're going to do taiko drumming. We can do calligraphy. So I, I was asked, and Meredith was asked to be on the board of directors, all for our usual fee. Um, but you know, it's a volunteer thing, and we do it out of love, and so. One thing has led to another. I am now the president of Friends of Shoseon, a, a, a volunteer nonprofit organization that preserves that tea house. And anybody that wants to send me an email, I will send them a little video that shows them all the renovation that we were able to do. Incredible. It is what you showed. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, folks, if this uh, is where I teach now, I teach privately up here. Sometimes I'm able to teach in the garden, sometimes right outside. Garden. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, folks. You, it's it, it does. This picture doesn't do it justice. Um, it's just I can't pull the video up on here, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But it's um, it, yeah, definitely. Um, Elric, I'm gonna I gotta run, Elric. I'm gonna have um, Elric. Would you mind if Elric sent you a question? Sure. Elric, if you can just maybe message him. Uh, otherwise, all that. Um, but. Uh, I definitely going to be bringing you back. Uh, maybe just up on hopology. Maybe we'll get you and a couple others. Um, and just, you know. There's a couple of people to, to bring on. Um, uh, Dave Hall is a very interesting guy. Okay. Uh, was Dave Hall and Chip Armstrong were were like this for about ten years. Okay. Um, he's he's also a uh, ordained Buddhist priest. He is a uh, Menkyo Kaiden in. Uh, in, in several different styles. So a master instructor in several different styles of Japanese arts. Okay. Liam Keeley uh, has his own experience. Yeah, you um, mentioned him. You know, and, and, and he went through, you know, he, he like, okay, got my got my my master's degree in, in, in anthropology and in cultural anthropology. Yeah. Um, uh, Hunter Armstrong, I, I don't know if he would be available, but but he's you know was was right with Drager a long mm. time senior senior guys so there are there are lots of people that would be able to to share hop yeah we have to get we, we're gonna have to get it uh, you know we're gonna have to get a group of you I'm thinking uh, um, October I want to get a group of you back on here just on apology and you guys can just show your pictures man just go to town <laughs> you know the, the um, Here's the people that I think you should invite. I, I, think okay. you should invite okay. I think you should invite the people that went on these expeditions. I'm fine with that. Sure, sure. All right. Because now Liam is the only person that has written anything down. Okay. Right? So names like Liam. Armstrong, okay. Armstrong. okay. Uh, Mike Scoss, that's spelled M-E-I-K, Mike Scoss. 
S S K O S S Mike Skoss. Mike was one of the first guys that I met in Japan when I was 18. Okay. Yeah, I could a homo. He's like like make sure you take your shoes off coming before you come into dojo, dude. Okay. <laughs> uh, Larry Bieri. Larry Bieri, B I E R I. Okay. Um, uh, Dave Hall. Now Dave Hall didn't actually go on the expeditions, but he spent a lot of time with Drager in Hawaii uh, and, and also in Japan. Okay. okay. Uh, Pat Leinberger. Okay. L I N E B E R G E R. Pat was the guy that I w w met in um, in Singapore, and I was going to crew on the boat with him. Okay. 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 So then there's Liam Keeley, L I A M K E E L Y. And and there there are some others, but but those guys, you know, some of them have gone on multiple trips. Like Mike has gone on multiple. Uh, uh, Hunter has gone on multiple. Larry has gone on multiple. I, I think that would be awesome. You know, I'll I'll just be in the audience. Yeah, but also if you can, my what I'm thinking is if you can maybe come on with a couple of them, then we would do another series with a couple more. Yeah. If sure. That's, yeah. So uh, if you still talk to these gentlemen. Um, you know, please you know, run the idea by them. And uh, I will. October, October, I will get you in a couple, and then and like in descent, we can do another one with two others. That would be that would be awesome. Great. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. talk story. Okay. And um, uh, do, do, do. oh, okay, sure. Uh, Elric, he, I, Elric is definitely going to uh, message you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I thank you so much for coming on the times. I am just. Uh, this is definitely. You know, I've had a lot of great episodes, and but this is, I'm telling you right now, this is going to go absolutely one of my uh, one of my best. Um, I really appreciate you. Please thank the wife that we borrowed you for. <laughs> and, um, and I really appreciate it. You are definitely, this will not be the last you hear of me. So uh, well, that's great, Gina. Thank you. Keep up the great work. You know, you're able to share um, Filipino martial arts with people and uh, especially using this format in this amazing uh, restrictive time that we're in. It's yeah. great. It's, it's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's guys like you that bring on and make it even more special. So yeah, I thanks to you. But uh, again, definitely not going to hear, you're not going to hear the last of me. So, <laughs> so don't move. All right. Thank you very much. All I right. You, too. you take care. Thank you. All right. All right. See you later. Wow. Yeah. Uh, amazing. So uh, part two in the books. And uh, yeah, obviously he'll be back. <laughs> um, hopefully with a few of his guys that he mentioned there. I'm going to have to have him uh, email me those names. Uh, who is next? Next. I think um, the R. I got a few next. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post an FM discussion along with all the pictures uh, that uh, Guru Mike has sent me. I'll definitely, well, I, I just wanted to uh, make sure it was okay with him. So look up for tonight if I have a discussion. A bunch of, all the, basically all the pictures he sent to me, I, I will uh, I will post in there and all that. All right, folks, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to FMA Discussion where all the proceeds we get, which are going to be coming soon, it's a three-month hold, and uh, it all gets donated to charity. So by you joining FMA Discussion on YouTube, you're uh, helping us help others. Again, all the money that we receive from the in the channel being monetized is going to charity. It's not going to us. It's going to charity. So if you subscribe to the channel, you're helping others. All right. Thank you all for the tuned in, and I will see you next time.